Hey guys, even here, and in this video we have a very, very interesting topic, which I'm sure you're all gonna enjoy, so stay tuned, in this video we're gonna be talking about Ian Valier winning the Toronto Pro, and whether he was gifted that victory, whether Hassan Mustafa was actually robbed, what the hell happened with Ian's chest, with his injuries, and that kind of stuff, all the drama that is surrounding this show that just happened, a lot of people are unhappy with the result, a lot of people are hating on Ian right now, not just bodybuilding analysts like myself, uh, but also like the, the general public mainly, like in the comment section of my video, almost everybody was like, this was not supposed to happen, like Hassan was robbed, and I was trying to defend Ian because I, I didn't see it that way, I thought Ian was a clear winner, and now, after like a whole day, Ian finally said something, he didn't post anything on his social media, not a story, not a post, even though he won a pro show, he qualified for the Olympia, he didn't say anything, he was completely silent, and you guys know Ian, you know how he is, he's very emotional, uh, he really lets these opinions of other people affect him, uh, you guys remember when Milos Sharchev criticized him when he won the New York Pro, when Milos said that his client Max Charles deserved to win instead of Ian, on Furabia's podcast, Ian started talking about that, about the backlash that he received received after he won that show and he basically started crying in that video in that podcast so ian is very sensitive he can't really take the hate he can't deal with it he can't cope with it he doesn't have the thickest skin and when i saw all this negativity surrounding his name everybody's saying that he didn't deserve to win that he should retire because of his injuries that something is wrong with his chest blah 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 i thought this guy is i don't know what he's gonna do now like, could he potentially maybe hurt himself? Something like that? I don't know. Like, he was completely gone from social media. And he is kind of known as a social media guy. Like, he is interacting with his fans all the time on his IG. He's always super active. But now he's back and he posted some things. He wrote a couple of things and he posted some videos and photos. And we're gonna go through them. We're gonna see what he had to say what some other people had to say about him and uh, we're gonna talk about i'm gonna give you my assessment on what i think is happening with his physique more particularly with his chest in the caption of this video that he posted he says statistics are more important better bigger than opinions which i absolutely agree with if you look at his statistics the last time he lost a pro show, a regular season pro show, was 2020 against Hunter Labrada and he was completely totally off with peak that year. Ever since then, I mean after that he won New York and he didn't lose a regular pro show. He, he didn't win Arnold or the Olympia, but all the other shows that he did, he won them all. So statistics are definitely on his side. Now, this sport, or a pageant, whatever it is, it is very subjective, so we can take a look at his physique and give our, our own opinions. It's not all about statistics, so if you look at this video that he posted, you can see that his conditioning was very good, and he was big. He was pretty full everywhere, except for his chest and probably arms. Now, his back. His back was much improved, take a look at his back right here. The last time we saw his back on stage was Mr. Olympia and everybody thought that he had some sort of nerve damage. Here is a comparison, so 2022, last year, Vancouver Pro on the left and Mr. Olympia also last year, 2022, on the right and his back looked completely different and we all thought it was an injury, it was nerve damage and everybody kept repeating that same phrase, it was nerve damage, it was nerve damage and it sort of became a meme and if you take a look at this comparison right here you can see that definitely something was wrong with his, with his back now there are two potential reasons for this one, the more logical one, is simply posing. As you can see, at the Vancouver Pro, he was leaning backwards and he was opening up his lats more. And on the at the Olympia, actually, he was rolling his shoulders forward, he was tilting his upper body forward, and he was flexing his glutes more. He wasn't really allowing his lats to pop up, to flex, to contract, and to open up. So I think it was mainly the posing, but it also could be something else, something that is 
unexplainable, at least for me, something that is very, very weird. I haven't really seen this before in my experience, in my coaching, in people around me. But, you know, these guys at the Olympia, they have special physiques. And some of them have really weird, demanding physiques, hard to crack, you know, when you, if, if you want to pick them right. And Ian is definitely one of the hardest guys to pick right for a show. And there is this second explanation that I got that for some reason, when he's flat, his body decides where it's going to be flat and where it's going to be full. He's not going to be just flat overall everywhere like normal people. It seems like his body decides to be flat at certain in certain body parts. Like his legs are always going to be full. But last year, it may have been his back that was flat. That wasn't filled with glycogen. It looked this weird. This year, it could be his chest. I can explain the potential reason behind his back looking weird and flat and injured and it could be just the posing or just flatness but as far as his chest I don't know man this year his chest is super duper flat and it's not just that it's flat like yeah it is flat but there is this middle part that is getting more and more separated and I, I'm not getting this I have no idea why this happened so it happens sometimes to people for example in bodybuilding if you talk about the top open guys there is another example of marcus rule and i think the same exact thing is happening to ian now that was happening to marcus back in the day so if you take a look at their chest before it was completely connected in the middle like where the muscle inserts it was inserting like very close to the other pectoral muscle like the line in between was almost non-existent there was no separation their chest was also very thick so it was completely connected the same thing was with marcus as it was with ian and then after this happened and it looks super weird it looks ugly it's gonna affect his placement at the olympia for sure it didn't affect him now at this show but at the olympia he can't really run away without with, with this looking like this what is happening here well i heard a theory that it could be just simply an injury and you guys probably remember you probably saw marcus rule doing those crazy wide uh, wide grip bench press movements and maybe he like overstretched his pecs to a point where the insertion started breaking but that's not something that ian is doing like he's training his chest mainly on machines He's not doing any kind of wide grip bench press or like incline bench press, uh, what, for example, Arnold used to do or Marcus Rule. So I don't think it's that. I think, I mean, I don't really know what to think, but my best guess would be some kind of an injury. Now, it's not only one pack that looks weird. It's both of them. So maybe like, maybe it's genetic. It's probably genetic. That's my best explanation that I can give it, to, that I can give to you. Like, it's probably genetic and just over time it happened. Like, his insertions in his middle part of the chest are not very strong. They are not very well connected uh, with his sternum. So, yeah, I guess they're breaking slowly his muscle fibers. And for that reason, his chest is getting more and more separated in the middle. Let's finish this posing video. So, back was really good. But when he turns around, you can see that his chest is like very tiny for his physique. And when he does this, most muscle, when he flexes it, it just looks, I don't know, man. It looks so weird. It looks pretty bad. And I don't know, can he fix this? I'm really curious. Can he make a change? Because he did successfully change his back. We were all pretty sure that he was done after that Mr. Olympia. Myself included. I thought he was supposed to retire because he looked like he was injured all over the place. And I'm feeling the same way right now. After I saw that chest, it doesn't look to me like he can fix that. If he can't fix that, there is no way he's gonna be top seven in the world ever again. But as you can see right here, he posted this story along with the other stories, uh, very interesting ones. And here he says, nerve damage fixed. It's a miracle. Of course, he's being sarcastic because that's a, that's a, that's a meme at this point. But whatever he did, was it posing or was it fullness, he fixed that. Can he fix his chest now? That is a big question to which I do not have an answer. But if you ask me, can he do some serious damage with the chest looking like this? Even if he is super big, super full, super conditioned, uh, and we all know how, how massive he is, and we all know his strong body parts and his flaws, 
how much will his chest affect him? I think if it looks the same from now on in his career, he's probably gonna stay a top 10 bodybuilder because of his mass and because of his conditioning. But can he be top 7 again or place higher than that? I don't see that. And considering how, how ambitious he is and how it's hard for him to be happy, to be satisfied with the results, I don't think he's ever gonna be happy in bodybuilding if he stays out of that top 7. So... You know, he should probably, I mean, it's really tough to say something like this. It's horrible to say something like this. But really, the way I see it, I think he should probably retire right now. I mean, look, I listened to Ian on a podcast a million times. And I know that he's tired of eating the same food, a whole bunch of food every day. I know he's tired of training very hard and being super regimented. Bodybuilding is his job right now. He loves his job, but it is a job for him. It's not a hobby for a long time. So if he doesn't enjoy it that much and if his placements are gonna suffer now and get worse and worse each year, like it was the case with Marcus Ruhl when that happened to him, he should probably end his career while he's still uh, like at the top and he still is at the top, you know, he, he just won a pro show, a very good pro show, I gotta say. So maybe this would be a right time for him to retire, but he can, he can definitely keep trying and he probably will keep trying and we'll see if he fixed his back. Then, who knows, maybe he can fix his chest, maybe it's just a flatness issue, posing issue, or something weird like that that we can't explain right now. I don't think it's fixable, but I didn't think his back was fixable. So we'll see what he's gonna do. If he doesn't fix it, he's gonna have troubles at the Olympia for sure. He's gonna suffer. His placements are gonna suffer more and more every year. And if you guys notice the trend, when this starts happening, it only keeps getting worse every year. So I don't think there's much hope for him. Like I said, uh, there has been a, basically a whole day of him not writing, not posting anything on his social media uh, after that pro show, after that Toronto pro show. And finally, he wrote a couple of things. He posted a couple of things and he wrote this uh, lengthy article, I would say. <laughs> And I will not read it to you. It's basically uh, an article about how people are allowing other people's opinions to affect them. And that's basically the point. And in the entire article, I'm saying article intentionally, uh, he's basically giving advice to other people not to allow the other people to affect them. And the way I'm seeing it, he's talking to himself because obviously the, this, this whole thing affected him. I know it did. It absolutely had to. Because you all know what Ian is like. He definitely affected him. And now he's trying to give other people advice how not to be affected by that. Like he knows how to. Uh, he's just writing this to himself, really. He's trying to make himself believe these things. And he's well aware that he's still trying to learn. He's aware that he can't really... Uh, that he is still not at that level to really not give a damn about other people's opinions. But yeah, it was it was kind of like it was silly. It was funny when I saw this 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 whole textless long text here that was a message to his audience. But really, if you if you read it, you're gonna see it's a message for himself. He wrote a message to himself. If he writes it, he probably thinks he's gonna believe it more. Anyways, now this is another thing that he posted. Uh, he says five and O oh in pro shows since 2020. Olympia was a hiccup, but we're back on track and ready to come full steam back for those top eight spots at the Olympia. And he tags Matt Jansen. And as you can see in the scorecard, he won this show with a perfect score, five and five. It was a clean cut win, and I absolutely agree with the decision. With the decision, you can you can check out my previous video about Vancouver Pro. I did an analysis of all the poses, analyzed them all. And I gave my assessment. I'm not going to give them... I, I'm not going to do an assessment again in this video. You can watch that video if you want. But basically, I also had Ian winning. I watched that video. I made that video before the awards. So I didn't know who was going to win. But I was pretty sure Ian was the most complete guy. He has a bunch of flaws. Just like Hassan does. Just like um, uh, Ross Flanning does. But I thought Ian's flaws are the, the, the smallest flaws and I still thought he deserved to win that show. I still believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, do I believe uh, Ian is going to be a great bodybuilder in the future and uh, do better than he did before? With that chest looking like it looks like right now? No. But was he the best bodybuilder in this show? Absolutely, if you ask me. 
This was an interesting repost. Ian Walier reposted something that Fu Arabiad had to write about Ian, and I'm saying he had to write uh, because he really has to. Uh, I mean, uh, Fu had started the podcast a long time ago and he had a great crew, but almost all of the guys left him, and Ian is one of the originals that are that is still with him. And if you guys are hardcore fans of Fu Arabiad's podcast, you noticed probably at some point that there was some kind of tension between Fuad and, and Ian. And it actually turned out that Ian is like the best of them all. He never started a new podcast. He was always loyal to, to Fuad. He was probably always grateful that he gave him the opportunity, that whole platform. He never got into business with Fuad. He was probably smart enough not to do that because he probably knew what kind of a businessman Fuad is and that they're probably going to have some problems along the, along the road if they started working together. So he didn't mix business and podcast, I mean, sponsorship and podcast, but he remained loyal to Fuad's podcast, he didn't start his own, he didn't uh, go to another one, he stayed with Fuad, and now Fuad is, uh, Fuad has his back, obviously, as you can see, he wrote this caption in the story, uh, and he says, pro judges with decades of experience, sitting 10 feet from the stage, all decided, Ian is first, yet internet experts viewing a live stream on iPhone pick think they got it right. People, you cannot accurately judge such a close show via live stream. If that was the case, IBB judges would sit at home and do it via laptop instead of flying all over the world. Give your head a shake, just admit when you're wrong and try and learn from it. Try and have some respect for a guy who just keeps winning instead of hating. It makes you look weak and salty. And I absolutely agree with Fuad, he didn't say anything wrong. He said everything absolutely right, but I have to disagree with the last sentence that Fuad wrote, it makes you look weak and salty. Now, if, you, if you're talking about the other pro competitors, if they had to say something like this, then yeah, it makes them look weak and salty. But as far as regular fans who are watching this, you know, through their phones or computer, they are just not fans of Ian's physique, they really dislike it. And they have the right to feel that way, to think that for, that actually uh, Ian didn't deserve to win. And that's okay, you can have your opinions, guys. I mean, I'm not, I don't have anything against it. I'm going to give you my, my opinion, my thoughts. And I think you're wrong if you believe that. I think yeah, Ian absolutely deserved to win this. He's far from being complete, far from looking perfect. But on that day, on that stage, he was the most complete guy. He deserved to win. Ian also posted a couple of photos, along with them there is this one, back double, that just looks much much better than last year at the Olympia, probably better than ever, and you can also see how sharp he was through the glutes and lower back and hamstrings, and the caption is interesting, he says just getting started, so obviously Ian has no attentions of ever, not really ever, but not retiring anytime soon. So we're going to keep seeing him at the Olympia and at the other shows. He's probably going to keep winning the other regular pro shows. I'm really curious to see if he's actually going to be able to improve on his physique until the Olympia, like he did from last Olympia to Toronto Pro. And I'm really even more curious to see if that chest is reversible, if it is fixable, and can he figure out what the hell happened with it. I'm really curious to see, to hear what he has to say about his chest. As soon as he does, guys, I will make a video about it and we're gonna talk a little bit more about Ian. So stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Go to the link down below and check out the old school lab supplements, buy any of them and just use the code Divan to help me, to help to, to support this channel and to help me make more videos like this. If you guys enjoyed this, please, once again, thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.